All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be recapping a trade that I took on the S&P 500. The goal of these recaps is that hopefully you can understand my thought process of going into a trade and managing a trade. So hopefully you can implement it into your trading as well. Before I get into the video, I wanna say that the PS5 giveaway ends tonight. Today is the last day that you'll be able to enter for the giveaway and the winner will be announced next week. All right, so now let's get into the trade. So this is my chart of the S&P 500. The trade that I took was actually a swing trade. So I was looking to hold the trade for multiple days. And this was mainly the only trade that I took this week besides a few scalps that I took on the NASDAQ. But this is, will be the trade that I'll be talking about for this video. So first, I'm going to start off by doing my little top down analysis. And if you haven't seen my video on multi time frame analysis, I suggest you go check that out because I will be using that concept in this video. So right now I'm on a daily time frame, And as I said, my three time frames I'm looking at is my daily, my four hour and my hourly. So my daily is my trend following time frame, And that's what I was looking at to look at what direction the market is moving. My four hour is what I was actually trading off of. And I use my one hour for entries when I was trading. All right. So starting out looking at the daily chart, this was the pullback right here that I was looking to get into. While analyzing the daily chart, what I'm looking for is one, what is the direction? And as you can see, price is making higher highs and higher lows. On top of that, price is also respecting my double EMAs right here, where it's an eight and 16 EMA. And if price can pull back into this area very nicely and hold support, I wanna look to buy those dips and continue for a next swing higher. Furthermore, price is also trading above the 200 SMA. And when I go down here, price is not yet overbought. So I know that we can get a nice healthy pullback for an entry. All right, now we're on my four hour chart and this is where I'm really going to actually be marking up the chart and putting in my lines, my areas of support and resistance and drawing out my fibs to see where I want to look to enter. So this here is the same pullback that we were looking at this pull back right here on the daily chart. This is where I was looking to get in. So now I'm going to go through and go through my confluences and reasons to why I want to enter a trade. So first off, what I'll do is I'll make sure that even though I already saw that the daily chart was trending up, I also want to make sure that the four hour chart is trending up as well, because that is what I'm going to be basically swinging. So first, what I'll start off by doing is charting at the most previous swing high and the most previous swing low. So I can draw the swing high right here. And the swing low, even though the wick came all the way down to here, and I, I do usually draw them based off the wicks, in this situation, there was a really aggressive sell-off due to news. I forget what it was. So in this case, I kept my swing low right at the open and close of these candles right here. So now that I have my swing high and swing low, I'm waiting for price to pull back. This is roughly where I was watching it. And I want price to stay above the swing low. If it breaks through, I consider it on a downturn and I'm no longer looking to swing the play. Price could also could have continued rallying up and then pulled back to the swing high, could have looked for an entry there, but a pullback came in early and I was able to get an entry off this pullback. So the next thing that I'll do is I'll draw in my support and my resistance. So apart from the swing low acting as a natural support, I also want to just look at other support and resistance where price is struggling to get through or hold above. So I'll go on this tool and I'll see that right here, we have price touching this area and I had one, two and three touches. So I'd put my box right here and I'd be looking for price to maybe come back to this area and bounce off. And that's what I was looking for initially. All right, and now the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my Fibonacci retracement tool and I'm going to draw from the swing low and I'm going to be actually using the wick swing low this time and I will be drawing it to the swing high before the pullback occurs. And now we have a fully marked up chart and now we can look at our confluences and see what price is doing. So as far as confluences, we saw that we have no Fibonacci a retracement line lining up with any level of support and resistance. So if that does not happen and there's no support or resistance that lines up with it, I don't really look to take a trade off the Fibonacci at any support or resistance area. So looking at the 4th of January, which is this day that I was waiting for the pullback, there was a very aggressive pullback. And because it was such a strong, big red candle, I was very wary to get into the trade too early. Especially with the four hour being overbought, you tend to see more aggressive pullbacks in this area. And I didn't want to leg lower to maybe come down and retest this area down here. However, price continued lower on the day and I didn't take an entry just yet until the next day. 
but I saw that price was holding up the 61.8 Fib level. And on top of that, price was bouncing very nicely off my 200 SMA. And usually this is an area where you'd want to buy for long-term entry. So this was a great confluence to possibly enter the trade. Furthermore, price did not break below the swing low. So price is continuing on an uptrend. So now I'm going to go into my one hour chart and begin looking for entries. All right, so now we're on my one hour chart. And the thing is, as I said, I was very wary to enter this trade. Usually I would have entered off a bullish engulfing candle like this once I saw it bounce off the 61.8 and I saw that line up with my 200 SMA. That would have given me enough confluence to enter the trade. However, with such an aggressive sell-off, especially with the four hour being overbought, I wanted to wait a little bit longer to make sure that this trade would be a winner. So as you see, I drew out this resistance level slash support level at this area and what i wanted to see was i wanted to see price reject this area and still continue bullish trying to push up if price rejected this area and began making a next leg lower on the hourly i didn't want to get into the trade but as you can see price continued to stay bullish in this area it bounced off it actually wicked through and tried to break through but it pulled back and after that it continued making legs higher so now i'm going to show you where i entered where i put my stop loss and where i exited all right, so my first entry was at 37.08. I'll color this green and it was roughly 37.08. So this is where I entered on the trade, this green line right here. I placed my stop loss based off of my hourly pullback. So first it was making a new high. So I placed my stop loss after it made this low and I was anticipating it to break a new high. As you can see, the red candle came down after that. So I was in drawdown and it did almost stop me out. Yeah, so my stop was roughly right here and I'll color that red. So this was a very close entry being stopped out, but I just put price below the swing lows because I don't want to see price break this level. If price were to reject this area and break through, I would expect it to be continuing lower and I don't want to be in the trade at that point. And I would consider my thesis for the trade to be invalid. And now my take profit for the trade was 37.63. I was targeting initially just the highs right here because as I said, this was a very aggressive sell-off and worst case scenario, even though price may have come all the way up here, it's potentially could have had a very aggressive sell-off, which it somewhat did, even though it continued higher. So I wanted to make sure that price just wasn't retesting this area to continue selling off again. So on my four hour chart, I close, I manually closed my position once I saw that this four hour candle wasn't able to break above the high. So I closed out my position once it started going red at 36.73 and I'll make this say gold right here. So this was 36.73 exit. So as you can see, this trade gave me a very nice risk to reward. I risked roughly almost $25 per share and I was able to profit a little over $50. So it was a little over a two to one risk to reward trade. And I risked 2% of my account. So I was able to grow my account by 4% by taking this trade. And of course, in hindsight, I could have held the trade a little bit longer and let it continue swinging. But as I said, when I saw aggressive sell off like this, I didn't really want to look to hold a trade for too long. It wasn't really meeting my criteria as a healthy pullback. And I didn't want to try and hold for too long. And as you can see, if I had actually stayed to my Fibonacci take profit level, this negative 27.0, which I, I don't, I never take profit at the 61.8, but at this 27.0 level, it actually would have hit it just yesterday at the end of the day, basically to the T. But of course that's hindsight and you can really never know where the market's fully going to go and profit is profit. I was able to get a nice two to one on this trade. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something and can get an understanding of the strategy that I use to swing trade. Make sure you go and smash that like button. It'll really help out my channel and make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Make sure you check out the Discord link in my description. I'm very active on there and I'm there to help. There's tons of educational content. And also before I leave, PS5 giveaway ends today, so make sure you enter in that giveaway.